My name is Onishi, and uh, well, well uh, it's my pleasure to make some uh, presentation this morning here. Uh, the, I'm working at the University of Tokyo, and also currently I'm serving as a, a president of the Science Council of Japan. Uh, since my specialty is city planning, so uh, today's subject is the, the kind of view from the city planning point of view uh, toward the uh, lessons we should learn from the Great East disaster, uh, Japan disaster uh, happened uh, last year, or March 11. Uh, so uh, my conclusion, uh, what, what, what is the lesson? It's very simple. The, well, disaster is always beyond assumption, our assumption. So therefore, uh, disaster uh, prevention, uh, we have been talking about the disaster prevention is important, but now uh, we have to change uh, our uh, basic idea is disaster reduction is more important than the disaster prevention. Uh, in Japan, we didn't uh, distinguish these two words, uh, disaster uh, reduction and disaster prevention. But now that we realize that uh, we have to distinguish these two words, and uh, we stress the disaster reduction is more important than uh, prevention. That's a very simple lesson. So th therefore, uh, I like to explain you uh, how to, uh, to come to this conclusion. Uh, so uh, that's the story of this morning. Well, this is the table of contents of my presentation this morning. Uh, the first of all, I'd like to just uh, uh, talk about, again, the characteristics of uh, the disaster we had last year, uh, which was the combined natural hazards and the disasters. Again, I have to make remark that uh, uh, Japanese people, even Japanese scholar, uh, didn't distinguish the word of hazard and the disasters. Of course, hazard is a national phenomena which may cause a disaster. However, we have very dense country and hilly uh, archipelago, so the every hazard may cause a disaster. So then uh, we realized that the hazard, hazards is equal to disaster. S but uh, anyhow, uh, the natural hazard may cause sometimes a disaster. So the, we had uh, three kinds of natural hazards and disasters. First of all, earthquakes. The epicenter of the earthquake was located 130 kilometers off the Sandik coast. Uh, you may see this, uh, the map, the left-hand side is the, uh, the circle of the part of the globe uh, the, around the Pacific Ocean. Uh, uh, Japan is located the other side of this circle uh, from the New Zealand. And the right hand side is the map of Japan archipelago. And uh, uh, this point shows that, oh, well, well, this is the center. And this is the where uh, Fukushima first nuclear plant was located, still is located. And this area is the heavily attacked by the uh, tsunami. So uh, uh, these areas are located in the rather eastern part of Japan. So therefore, uh, this uh, the disaster is called East, Great East Japan Disaster or Great East Japan Earthquake. Well, second is tsunami. The earthquake created an enormous tsunami. The maximum height of the water level was recorded as 9.3 meter, and the run-up height was 40.5 meter, the largest ever recorded in Japan. And the third disaster is nuclear power plants accident. Four nuclear power plants lost all electricity to cool the nuclear re reactors and caused the severe accident of meltdown. And forced thousands of people to evacuate, and of course some of whom were exposed to radiation. Th this is the, the three different kinds of disasters and hazards we had last year. And 
first of all, I'd like to show you some of the pictures which just uh, show the, what happened in Japan. Uh, this is the, the moment of a tsunami attacked the, the town uh, in uh, Miyako city, rather northern part of the uh, damaged area. And this is another uh, city uh, which also was attacked by tsunami. Uh, the, there are two kinds of areas. One area is uh, Sawtooth coastal line area. Uh, this area was uh, attacked by tsunami very often, not only this time. Uh, but another side is the plain area, uh, southern part of Miyagi prefecture. Uh, there, there are large plain there, so uh, uh, people didn't think that uh, uh, they were attacked by tsunami because the in the uh, long past they had the, the uh, experience uh, that tsunami attacked them, but uh, uh, not recently. So th therefore, they didn't anticipate they are uh, attacked by tsunami. So uh, this is part of Sawtooth coastal line area. And uh, uh, this is the, one of the city named Sanrikucho, or their headquarters of the city was just uh, uh, the attacked by tsunami. And uh, th this is the plain area, the picture of plain area. Uh, this is the picture of Sendai airport. So the airport is located very close to the coastal line, and uh, it was uh, the flooded. And this is another angle of the plain area attacked by tsunami. And uh, this is again coming back to the coast, uh, sawtooth coastal line. And uh, after the tsunami, uh, the, all the cars uh, uh, pushed away. And even the uh, ship was pushed away. This is the picture of a nuclear power plant, Fukushima uh, first nuclear power plant. There are two uh, the power plants in Fukushima area. One of them is Fukushima first. There are altogether six reactors. And uh, uh, the four of them are uh, active. And they were attacked by tsunami and damaged. Uh, this is the picture of the explosion of one of the reactors. And this is the another reactor also they had the explosion. Well, I, I said that uh, there are three kinds of natural hazards and uh, disasters. But uh, uh, the earthquake itself, it was very heavy earthquake and uh, uh, well, it was the uh, most severe earthquake we had experienced. It was uh, in the history, but uh, it didn't damage much of the, the buildings. Of course, some of the buildings are destroyed by the earthquake, but uh, most of the victims are caused by tsunami. So therefore, uh, the tsunami is the most important natural disaster. Uh, it caused a lot of damage. Well, so uh, then uh, this is this, uh, this sum up of damage of disaster. The striking areas, uh, this casualty in 11 prefectures. Japan has the 47 prefectures, and uh, 11 prefectures uh, out of them got uh, this casualty. And heavily in three prefectures, Iwate, Miyagi, Fukushima, those prefect three prefectures attacked by tsunami heavily, and about 40 local municipalities in those three prefectures had a, a very heavy casualty. And the damage, more than 18,000 people killed, more than 129,000 buildings completely broken. And total amount of damage in money is 16.9 trillion yen, equivalent to 228 billion New Zealand dollars. Uh, this is the amount of damage. And uh, the, one of the characteristics of this tsunami, uh, especially Sawtooth coastal line, experienced many tsunami in the past. Jogan tsunami, 869, 
uh, this is very big tsunami, and the Keicho, and uh, uh, even after the uh, 1800, we had a very big uh, tree tsunami before this tsunami. One is the Sandiku tsunami, it happened in the same, almost the same place as we had the tsunami this time, 1896. And again, uh, Showa Sandiku tsunami, 93-33, in the same place. And the Chile tsunami, uh, the earthquake happened in Chile, and the tsunami came over uh, from the, uh, well, uh, it took, it took uh, almost 24 hours uh, for the tsunami to reach uh, this uh, area. And then uh, we had the, uh, this time tsunami in 2011. Uh, well, uh, another characteristics of this uh, disaster is <clears throat> disaster happened in the depopulated areas. The population in affected areas, uh, which is Pacific coastal area of Northeast Japan, has been losing its population by 5% every five years recently. And they lost more than 5% for, for the 15 months after the disaster, including not only victims, but also out migrants. So th therefore, uh, this uh, uh, tendency gives us very much worry uh, for this area may lose more population. Uh, so it, it is not easy to reconstruct this area uh, with the less population. Well, uh, this is the budget and the reconstruction of uh, the uh, program. Uh, the totally, uh, well, a little bit less than 20 trillion Japanese yen will be spent for uh, reconstruction of this area. And the government set up the special organization in the government. And uh, uh, the the construction program already installed. And the local government is a key player for the reconstruction of the uh, affected area. Uh, there, I said that uh, there are three prefectures. Uh, prefecture is the second level of the government, central government and prefectural government and the local municipalities. This is our governmental system. And the three uh, prefectures already uh, they formed their reconstruction plan. And also that there are uh, uh, more than 40 uh, local municipalities which uh, uh, are damaged by tsunami severely, and all of them already formed their reconstruction plan and conducted the reconstruction projects. This is the, the present situation. And uh, uh, the, if we look at the areas attacked by tsunami, uh, now the rubble was put away in striking areas. But reconstruction has not yet started in full scale. Uh, what is going on now is uh, the planning on the local government uh, or local people agreement building among victims is promoted for reconstructing communities in safer high ground, not to repeat similar uh, damage. Uh, since this area was attacked tsunami by tsunami many times, w one of the most important point is, the, uh, is to find the safer uh, place where they built their houses or uh, facilities again. So uh, they have to move to the safer place nearby. Uh, that's most important Point. So therefore, they need a discussion and uh, uh, need reach agreement among them. And uh, now the number of refugees are still 340,000 and 160,000 of them in Fukushima prefecture. Well, uh, since it takes several years for the completion of reconstruction, it is worried again whether local employment and the population can be maintained. Uh, if we look at the uh, nuclear power plants, no more major emission of radioactive materials observed since April 2011. The government is planning to rezone one uh, warning area and the planned evacuation area into new zones, including long-term difficult to return area. Some of the places 
near Fukushima plant, people cannot go back to their uh, hometown. And it is a worry that many people, especially younger generation, may not come back to their hometowns affected by radiation. Now the old nuclear power plant in Japan, except for one, stop working at the present for travel or regular check. There was no shortage of electricity in the summer, but the future electricity supply will be uncertain. This is the present situation. So now I come to the lesson uh, from the Great East Japan disaster. Uh, well, as I said before in the, in the, uh, the beginning of the, my presentation, disasters can be beyond assumption. The, from the disaster prevention planning to disaster reduction planning is essential for the preparation for future disasters. Uh, disasters cannot be prevented by man-made facilities only, such as water breaks or sea walls. Therefore, the combination of disaster prevention facilities, town and village planning, uh, land use planning, and evacuation facilities is most important. People's life must be saved, and the properties are protected as much as possible. This means some of the properties may be lost. The disaster reduction planning should be applied to the recovery plans of damaged areas and also the preventive plans of areas where large-scale natural disasters are expected. Well, uh, especially a larger tsunami than this time is expected in West Japan, not East Japan, which may kill 320,000 people according to the government prediction released in August 2012, just a couple of days ago, the government uh, announced that, uh, well, potential uh, the victims uh, will be 320,000 people in uh, West Japan. So uh, we have to prepare for this coming tsunami. Uh, we have to do many things. Well, uh, the couple of pictures uh, from now uh, will show that the idea of combination of three points. One is the disaster uh, prevention facilities, sea walls or water breaks are important to avoid the damage of the smaller tsunami or even weaken the damage of the large tsunami. And the second is land use planning. Uh, people should live in the safer place. And the third one is the evacuation program. Uh, finally, people must uh, the, uh, run away from the area uh, which might be attacked by tsunami. So uh, the idea uh, uh, is shown here. Uh, this is the, the moving the, uh, the communities to the, uh, the higher place. And uh, uh, the building uh, which will be located in the area which might be attacked by tsunami, it should be reinforced concrete buildings and uh, the many story building. And of course, in the coastal line, we have to have the uh, sea walls or even the breakwater. Well, uh, we draw this lesson from the uh, experience we had in this uh, tsunami. Uh, there are three types of communities uh, we can observe. One is the, uh, the basically safe community in this uh, disaster. Uh, the, one of the examples is Sanrikucho or Yoshihama. Uh, the name of the community is Yoshihama. Uh, this community moved uh, from the original area to uh, higher ground uh, after the Meiji tsunami and the Showa tsunami. Uh, more than 100 years ago. And this is the, uh, the pink area show that the flooded area. And this uh, purple zone uh, shows that uh, the, uh, the place where the, some of the houses were broken. Well, however, the, almost all houses were safe because the tsunami just uh, came uh, the 
before those uh, community. And uh, the seawall uh, they constructed in, in, along the coastal line were broken, but the seawall can weaken the uh, strength of the tsunami. So uh, this is the, the best case we had in this uh, the occasion. And the second one is the, the partially safe and the partially damaged community. Uh, this is another uh, the town of Kamaishi, and the name of the community is Tony Hongo. Uh, the, this is the flooded area, and the part, some part of the flooded area uh, where the, uh, the houses were broken. And uh, uh, if you look at this picture, those houses are safe, but uh, those uh, debris here, so there are 50 houses located here and uh, those houses are uh, destroyed. The, what happened in this community? After the uh, Showa tsunami, all the houses moved to those safer area, but uh, we had the seawall construction after the Chiri tsunami, and then the, after completion of this seawall, uh, the government allow the people to live behind the seawall. So then the 50 uh, the houses were built after the completion of this seawall. And those houses are broken. And the final uh, the example in uh, Taro or Miyako City, the name of Taro is quite famous among the people who are uh, interested in the tsunami uh, because the, they had a very strong seawall system in a town. Uh, this, the community of Talo was attacked many times by tsunami, so uh, they thought that uh, they should move to the safer ground after Showa tsunami, but uh, they couldn't find a good place for uh, construction of a new community. Instead, they constructed uh, sea walls in a town. Uh, this is a sea wall, 10 meter high, and uh, 120 meter long. And, uh, those sea walls are doubled. But this is the, the moment the tsunami attacked the sea wall, came over the sea wall and attacked the, those houses inside the sea wall. And uh, the old areas are flooded and uh, the houses are broken. And this is the, the, the picture after the uh, disaster in Taro. So uh, I showed the three cases, one is the uh, rather safe community, and the second one, the partially safe and the partially damaged, and finally, the uh, totally damaged community. Uh, it is difficult to, to classify all the communities into those three categories, but uh, typically, we can say uh, the result of the uh, preparation came uh, into those three categories. So uh, only the, the community where the people moved to the safer ground uh, uh, were not damaged by tsunami. But if the partially moved to the safer ground, but the partially remain in the lower ground. So uh, the houses in the lower ground are attacked by tsunami and the sea walls cannot avoid the uh, damage of tsunami. So th that is the lesson. The second lesson from the Great East disaster is related to the nuclear power uh, plant. Uh, the, my point is the principle of disaster prevention should also be applied for nuclear power plants case. The electricity companies, government, and even experts have been believed, believing in a myth Nuclear power plant is always safe without any possibility to cause a severe accident. Uh, uh, this is the case of Japan. So uh, they say that the nuclear plant is safe enough. So th there is no need to add some more uh, safe, well, uh, well, uh, safe facilities uh, in addition to the existing uh, safe facilities. So uh, they neglect the further, uh, well, improvement of the facilities for uh, uh, making the plants safer. But uh, this time the myth was broken. 
Therefore, Japan must understand nuclear power plants may cause severe accident again if it continues to use them. The cost of nuclear power plants must include the preparation for not only the additional facilities for, for more safety and security, but also enough buffer space around plants or even alternative places where evacuated people can live when an accident happens. Of course, it is very much questionable whether any municipality accept the construction uh, because the, uh, the accident may happen. It is questionable whether any municipality accept operation or the operation of a nuclear power plant if a severe accident can be avoided in the long future. So therefore, uh, we have to uh, very importantly think about the the opening of the nuclear facility, and also the, we have to think about the future energy supply uh, without having the nuclear power plants. Uh, that, that's uh, the most important subject in terms of energy policy, policy uh, we have now. Well, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.